Hello everyone, this is Stephanie from Apex Languages. A special Veterans Day shout out to anyone listening who served in the military. Thank you for your service. I know that immigrants from a lot of countries think it's a little unusual the way that we here in the United States show so much gratitude to our soldiers. Because in their countries, military service is mandatory. Every man has served his time. The difference is that here, our soldiers are all volunteers. No one has to go to war to fight on our behalf. They choose to. The draft system is in place only for cases of extreme emergency. For me, personally, as a pacifist, I hate everything about the military. Yet, I have nothing but respect for the individual men and women who are willing to sacrifice their lives to defend their country and what they believe in. So, for today's episode, we're going to talk about biting the bullet and other military-based idioms. To start with, let me clear up a little bit of confusion. We have two main holidays here in the U.S. to honor our military, Memorial Day and Veterans Day. What is the difference? Well, to start with, Memorial Day takes place the last Monday in May. In 2021, that will be May 31st. Veterans Day is always the same, November 11th. Why? Because originally, this day was meant to honor the men who fought in World War I, the war to end all wars, which itself ended on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month of 1918. Memorial Day is even older, dating back to the Civil War, and was designated to honor specifically those who never made it home, the soldiers who died in action. A very important, noble thing to recognize. Unfortunately, in modern times, Memorial Day has lost a lot of its respectability, or I suppose it's more accurate to say that people have started respecting it less. Because of when it falls, the holiday has come to be more of an unofficial start to summer where people take advantage of the long weekend to host barbecues and party at the pool. It's a real shame. That's why so much more pressure is placed on Veterans Day to make up for our national disrespect. On this day, we honor the sacrifice and bravery of all military personnel, now from all wars. Speaking of the Civil War, we have that fun skirmish to thank for our first idiom, bite the bullet. Say that again with me. Bite the bullet. Bite the bullet. You see, medical care in the 19th century was a nightmare. Many more soldiers died from infections and disease in hospitals than from the battles themselves, twice in many, in many cases. Those that did survive recovery often did so minus an arm or a leg. The best part, no anesthesia. So when it came to surgery, you just had to grin and bear it. Well, not exactly. They were at least nice enough to give soldiers hard things like bullets to bite into, to distract them from the pain. Let's not dwell too long on that gruesome image, shall we? The point is from these bloody origins developed our phrase meaning more generally, to do something you don't want to do because it's hard or unpleasant or to adapt to such a situation. Nobody wants to wear a mask at work all day, but we bite the bullet and do it anyway because we don't want to get sick or make anyone else sick. Or like in our sample sentence, the dishes weren't going to wash themselves. So I bit the bullet and started scrubbing. Remember, bite is an irregular verb. I bite. I bit, I have bitten. On a related note, we also have to dodge a bullet. Dodging means to move quickly away from something to avoid it. He dodged the out of control Dodge van by jumping out of the way. So it's not a big surprise to learn that this idiom means to avoid a bad situation, 
especially if just barely. Otherwise, where's the suspense? You certainly don't have to reserve this for life or death situations, though. If you show up late to work, but your boss shows up even later, you've dodged a bullet. If you forgot to pay the utilities bill, but call and convince them to give you an extra week to pay, you dodged a bullet. Or here's this mini dialogue. Does this dress make me look fat? Don responded, uh, no, but I think this will look even nicer, hoping he had dodged a bullet. What do you think, guys? Did it work? Our next idiom is to draw fire, another verbal phrase. How do you like the fire that I drew? Amazing, right? But that's not the kind of fire or drawing that we're talking about here. As you can see, guns make fire too, which is why you can either shoot or fire a weapon. And draw can also mean to attract or provoke. The moths were drawn to the flame means that they wanted to be close to the fire. They walked willingly right into the trap. Back to the point. Therefore, when you draw fire, you are unfortunately attracting bullets. In other words, getting into big trouble because you caused problems for yourself. The employee drew fire after repeatedly failing to turn in his reports on time. If this continued to happen, he'd be fired. Another apt example may go something like, the politician drew fire after resisting stepping down from office when his term was up. Once again, I hope you notice that draw is also irregular. I draw, I drew, I have drawn. One more idiom for you. Stick to your guns. Lord, this has been far too common these past few months, both literally and figuratively. People waving their guns around, insisting that they're right, no matter how many others think they're crazy. When you stick to your guns, you're stuck like glue. Huzzah, another irregular verb. You refuse to change what you believe in, no matter what the opposition. This can be seen in both a positive and negative light. You're either persistent or stubborn, dogged or an ass. Uh, sorry, I meant mulish. Pig-headed also works. Following up from the previous sample sentence, even after his job was threatened, the employee stuck to his guns and insisted that he could turn in reports whenever he wanted. Whether the guy is right or wrong, I'm sure his boss doesn't agree. Okay? Make sure you don't forget to change your guns to his guns or whatever the context calls for. Finally, before wrapping up, I also wanted to introduce a few civilian-friendly acronyms and initialisms that come from the military. If someone doesn't show up for a meeting or a group gathering, you could say that they are MIA, missing in action. We don't know where they are, just that they aren't here where they're supposed to be. On the other hand, if your teenage daughter was supposed to stay at home and you suddenly realize that she did decide to meet up with her friends after all, she is AWOL, absent without leave. Leave here means permission. A snafu, now common enough that you can write it as a regular word without all the capital letters, is a problem caused by confusion and or incompetence. Short for situation normal, all fouled, or more commonly, fucked up. This reflects the common soldier's lack of faith in their superior officers. It's normal for things to be messed up. Regardless, it's the grunt on the front lines who must pay the price for their leader's mistakes, often in blood. Big corporations have snafus too. President Trump insists that there was a snafu with the election. Because of all the chaos and bad machines, something must have gone wrong. It's the only explanation, right? Unfortunately for him, he's probably SOL, our final initialism for the day. That stands for shit out of luck. Sorry, but soldiers like to swear. Being out of luck means that whatever you wanted probably isn't going to happen. The shit is added just for emphatic fun. One more acronym for you, KISS, 
K-I-S-S stands for Keep It Simple Stupid. And that's the plan for today's homework assignment. Write me a sentence or two, or three, using one or more of the new idioms or acronyms that I introduce in today's video. Remember, the more you practice, the faster your English will improve, and the less fire you'll draw from the haters out there. I'm sticking to my guns. Practice does make perfect. While you're at it, also feel free to leave more military phrases you've heard below in the comments. There are plenty. I guess I'll just have to save the rest for Memorial Day. Thank you, as always, for watching, guys. And be sure to check out more videos at my website, apexlanguages.com. Times are strange, but don't lose faith. Just keep fighting the good fight. Stay happy, healthy, and safe. And I'll see you again next week.